want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. From the first day, I felt very welcome at Indiana Tech. I just really enjoy the classes and the vibe I get from all the other athletes and just the students here. Everybody's cool and everybody gets along really well. I'm currently a senior and since my freshman year, student life activities have really grown throughout campus and there are so many ways that you can meet new people. You can go bowling, you can watch movies, and it's just really important to get involved on campus. You have intramurals, anything from billiards to basketball. It's made student life very enjoyable. I love Fort Wayne because there's always something going on, like festivals. I walk a bunch of the trails here locally. There's great restaurants. There's always something fun to do. You can never be bored here in Fort Wayne. The school spirit at Indiana Tech is epic. It's everything. We had our first annual hockey game not too long ago. Everybody showed up, face paint, cowbells, Trojan hats, lawn gnomes. It was amazing. It makes it so worthwhile to be a warrior. Go Warriors. You want to know what's possible at Indiana Tech? Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. It's a championship Sunday in the Summit City as we welcome you live inside the Sport One Parkview Ice House, the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference Championship, and an automatic bid to the ACHA National Tournament is on the line here today between the University of Michigan Dearborn Wolverines and the underdog Concordia Cardinals. We'll start there, the fourth seed in this tournament making a run to the championship game for the first time. They got it done yesterday over the host and top seed, Indiana Tech. Four different goal scorers for the cards. It was Tyler Beanick, Bryce Ayat, Carson Ediger, and Brandon Kusera. A timely first goal of the season as they knocked off the 32, the 33 and one now, Indiana Tech Warriors. It was a shorthanded goal to get it started for Tyler Beanick, Bryce Ayat, Carson Ediger. The middle goals and Brandon Kusera, the power play tally early on in the third period for the 4-0 stranglehold. Indiana Tech was able to get one back with Axel Lowe, but it was too little too late. Zachary Janis, 44 stops on 45 shots. He was locked in. He gets the nod in goal again today for Concordia, playing the second of three games this weekend for the Cardinals. But that's not an advantage for Dearborn. They're looking at their third in three days as well. And they're riding with the same goaltender as they have all three days. It'll be Eric Polzin today. Once again, only had to make 14 saves, a relatively light workload, at least looking at the shots on goal numbers against Lawrence Tech. Lawrence Tech, it was a 5-1 to one win for Dearborn yesterday. And a little bit of a more open game than we thought it might be. A 5-1 to one game, not what we were really expecting. Brendan West really shut down, but it did not end up mattering. Mikhail Kudenko, the first goal of the game, he assisted on another one when Quest Bigelow got a redirect out in front. Kieran O'Connell and Bailey Bird also contributing alongside Brendan West. 
who had three points in that contest. They were able to push 28 shots on goal. Kroll in net for Lawrence Tech, only able to stop five of them. We'll go ahead and take a look at how yesterday unfolded visually. With, we'll start with the Indiana Tech and Concordia highlights. Again, a four to one win for the Cardinals. For Hebner in the left corner, stretched up ahead. Making a break as Benoit has Francois breaking. Oh. Francois with the shot in Barnhill with the oh, save. It's, it's loose. The loose. Ali has Derek Hebner with some moves, trying to work it back in, but it's on the stick of Austin Buck. Now he stretches it up for Ali. One on one with Kusera. Ali with the help mm. for Smith, and it's stopped Boy. by Janet. Boy, ball. Does a good job to fight that one back, though. Plummer. With the turnover to Twombly. To Hebner a one-timer. That's blocked. Rebound is there. And oh, they score. Oh, Campbell came in. He Dugan. Taken down. Beanick is over there. Ali gets it Here out to go. Dugan. Dugan trying to turn on the Jets. Here we go. TJ Dugan with the move. He and he stopped. Oh, that might have the hit the pipe. post. I think it did. It was. Benoit. With Mickey Fork all over him for a second. Now Benoit will play it towards the goal. It's gloved by Carruthers. Loose puck. It. Plummer is able to slow it up. Ayan with the shot, and he scores. So and, uh, if there was baseball, we'd be caught. With control for the Warriors. Smith now skating up ice. He's across the line. Wrapping this one around. Still hanging on. Tries the wrap around. It scores! Now they're washing it. They're washing it. Edgar dumps it in. Goes in deep, Buck is back there, turns it over to Ediger. Ediger trying to wrap it in, scores! Concordia leads, 3-0. The left wall sent towards the goal. Mm -hmm. Hyatt had a potential chance there. Goes to Rydell now near side. He works it out to the point for Kusera. His shot through oh, traffic and scores! On he never saw it out to the blue line to Chabot. Dufort at the left point. He'll trade with Chabot. Keeps the puck. Over to Grank with the one-timer. Mm. But the roller still Ooh, there. Shit. And oh. it stays out. It's the best they're looking here, so they've got to get her going. His tails. Dufort. Last man back. Got to be careful here. And here you go. It's a breakaway coming the other way for tails. Can Dugan catch him? Yes, yes he, he does. Good stick on that. Dufort. And a little bit of a sketchy play there, but it works out. Here we go with Dufort. Goes over to Lowe, down to 40 seconds. Lowe cutting to the net. Lowe with the shot. Rebound is there, and the second chance opportunity is kept out by Janus. Again to Chabot. Right out in front. They and score! They, it. they finally get one. Power play goal. All right, we'll bring you back live. There you see how Indiana Tech fell. Concordia moving on after their overtime defeat of Aquinas here on Friday. We thank you so much for joining us here today. I'm Joe Hacker. I'll have your play-by-play -play today. Connor Hendrickson on the camera will be providing the visuals for you as we are looking to hand out a trophy to one of these two teams. Like I said, for Concordia, this is their first WAC Tournament Championship game. And it's been quite the rise for them all the way back in 2018-19. First season for them that's on record, a 6-27 record. Even worse the next year, 3-26-2. But last year, uh, they put up a 13-16 record and started to make some real strides. And now this year, here they are, a 19-15-3 record, playing for a WAC tournament championship and a national tournament bid. Their last time making it to a national tournament was back in 2019. Uh, that is the NAIHA tournament. That was an inv invitational that everyone got invited to, so we won't really go much into that one, but this would be their first trip to the ACHA national tournament should they be able to pull off yet another win here today. For Dearborn, they're absolutely no strangers to this. This is their third WAC tournament title should they be able to win, but their first since 2020 after falling just short last year. And 2015, the last time they didn't play in the national tournament, they have made all of the ACHA national tournaments besides the 2021 COVID season in which they did not take part. They've made it all the way to the semifinals before. That was back in 2019 before they fell to Iowa State. And if it weren't for the COVID-19 pandemic, they were in good position again in 2020 to make another run. And just last season, they were in St. Louis as well for the tournament. And it kind of started here on this very sheet of ice. I've mentioned it before, but really a play-in game situation versus Aquinas last season. Those two teams were like 17 and 18 coming into the tournament. They played on the Saturday semifinal. Dearborn won. Those two teams switched spots. 
and Aquinas the first team out. And once Dearborn got there, they did do a little bit of damage. The first game of the whole tournament was them taking on Arizona. They pulled off a 2-1 to one win, but then ultimately fell in the round of 16 to eventual national t- champion Lindenwood by a score of 3 no, could be a similar situation with their game yesterday against Lawrence Tech. We'll see if that's a bit of a play-in game situation as well. Those two teams, both on the bubble, will take a look back to last night's second semifinal. Here is number 16, Bradley Scott. Heads up for Ooh. West. He's lit up. What a good hit. Seconds, and then stepping out of the box will be Koontz, and we'll be back to five on five. Into the corner, Petterly out for Kudenko. Kudenko cutting across, heads it and takes the shot and scores! Oh, it was technically even strength because the... We at least have one as that goal. Oh, oh here we go. Here's a, here's a breakaway attempt for Hire. Hire, Hire short-handed. Oh! That is going to be a penalty yeah, shot. Yeah, that should be. Let's see, in. let's see. Everyone is set and we get the whistle. Here we go. Hire takes it up and ranges over to his left. Coming in with speed. Hire with the shot oh! and it's off the post! Oh! Down low. Cesarini had his stick tied up. It's into the corner for Bland. And that's a weird angle shot. And they think it's in. Is it in? Well, Lawrence, the Blue Devils are celebrating, but... There's no signal. So the official did not come up right away. Look, he just slid up there. Think of West. Loose puck in the center circle. And here you go. Here's a chance for Lawrence Tech. With the shot was Koontz. But it was stopped. Trying to go just on. Yep. Lawrence Tech will win the draw. Matavi oh, broken up. Here Bird. comes Bird. Bird with the shot. It's stopped by Kroll. Wow, and plays it. Petterly. Now it's controlled by Bigelow. He goes to the point. Kudenko. Kudenko. His shot through oh, and they score. Wow. Redirected in by Bigelow. Wow. So. Maybe a little bit of a matchup situation here. Now here comes West, fresh off the bench, down to the left wing, trying to feed for Potter, and it's stopped by Kroll. Wow, and he looked down and he got it. And I'm not. He tries to work this one out, gets it out past Bird. Now West into the neutral zone, doesn't have much help. Puts it in the middle, wow. O'Connell. O'Connell with the chance here still. It's wrong. He scores. He scores. Wow, he was getting tied up. On the ice, no icing going to be called. As that is Gents going back there with McCarchuk. Oh, he right here's it. a shot. Oh, right out wow. there. And Cullinan guides it to safety as pulls it wow. is up to it then. Full of it. Utterly to Matthews. He tries to kick it back outside to Kudenko. Kept alive. This is Priest. Emery away from him. There's a shot on the wall. Still loose out in front. Here it comes. comes out to the point. Sample with the shot. Oh, and they, they scored. it on the screen. I think they got it in the fiver when he was down. Boss trying to find Bird. Bird pokes it past. Here we go with Bird. Bird switching sides with the shot. Rebound oh, there for wow. Conan, and it still stays wide. To the near side. Colin in with it. Goes to West, and he oh. scores a rocket shot. Wow, on the one-timer there. Yeah. Wow, dangerously, though. West with the chip. Now here comes Colin in. Has Bird with him, but there's a trailer. Colin in switching sides with Bird with the shot. Crow with the save, and it's cleared out. To safety by Lawrence Tech. Over there, his shot goes a bit wide. McCarchuk as we're under three. West, center out in front, a weird bounce, and they score. It's Bailey Bird. Oh, man. Crawl could not get a hold of And we come back live once again. We're just about 10 minutes away from the puck drop here between UM Dearborn and Concordia for the WAC Tournament Championship. We'll kind of reflect here on the season series between these two teams so far. And it's a 4-0 sweep of the season series at this point for UMD. They're each other's first WAC conference matchup, though. So they played each other all the way back at the early stages of October and right out of the holidays in January. So it's been a while since these two teams have seen each other. We'll see how they kind of reacclimate to facing off against each other. And outside of one game, it was a close season series. These were all fairly tight games. 3-2, 5-4, 3-2, 3-2, to 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 and then 4-0 in game four, the only one that wasn't really close. So we'll start and recap game one. It was a 3-2 to win for UMD. Mikhail Kudenko, two goals in the third period to separate that one for Dearborn. It was tied 1-1 to after 40 minutes. The late goal from Francois made it 3-2, to but by that point it was a little bit too late. Still a little bit of time there for Concordia to try and even it up, but obviously did not do it in the end. The second game, probably the hardest one to swallow 
for Concordia. Actually, both of the middle two games of the series are tough ones to swallow. Concordia in game number two led 2-0 after the second period, but then in the third, five straight goals for Dearborn. Two of those from Kudenko. He's been favorable in this matchup with four goals in that initial season uh, series set back in October. So it went 5-2. Then a couple more came back from Concordia, uh, but could not, again, ultimately close up and get that game back even. In game three, this one went right down to the wire. Concordia again led this game at multiple points. They had the lead twice, and Dearborn only led for the final 53 seconds of the game in the 3-2 win. It was Chance Matthews with the DWG, the game winner. And like I said, only 53 seconds left in the game when he was able to put that one home. And as I mentioned before, it was 4-0 in game four. That was the only one that wasn't really close. Eric Polzin, a 26-save shutout in that one. And he gets the nod again today. Excuse me. For Dearborn, his third game in three days. We'll see if fatigue starts to set in. Like I said, though, only 14 saves in last night's game. Didn't have a lot of shots on goal, but there were certainly periods of time where Lawrence Tech had the puck and was peppering shots, just missing the mark wide. And then it'll be Zachary Janis for Concordia, his second in two days after taking over from Anthony Sakura, who played in Friday's overtime win over the Aquinas Saints. National tournament implications. We'll kind of hit on that one more time, get into a little more of the nitty gritty. So the average composite rating of the two categories that's used to determine the national championship field, UMD, they average out to 18.5. And so they're clean at number 18 in the rankings. And 2.5 ahead of them, it's a 16.0 average is Utah. They're ranked number 17. Uh, two and a half at this point in the year. That's going to be a tough ask in just one weekend. Uh, but the win over Lawrence Tech might just be able to push them closer. And then obviously if they were to win today, that takes care of that. And Dearborn, you have to know, they're going to be looking for that automatic bid. Eliminate any questions on if they're going to be in when the final rankings and the bracket is released later this week. For Concordia, it's much more cut and dry. No ambiguity here. They know if they lose, their season is over. They're ranked all the way down in 30. They have no shot, virtually no shot, at being in without a win today. And the automatic bid that comes with it, that win over Indiana Tech is not going to be enough to make up the almost 15 points they need to make up in the rankings to get there. Now down to about five more minutes before we get puck drops. So we'll go ahead and take one more quick break. When we come back, we'll get the starting lineups and the national anthem. You're watching the WAC Ice Hockey Tournament brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. You want to know what's possible at Indiana Tech? Yeah. Pretty much everything.
visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Welcome back inside the Sport One Park through Ice House. Referees on the ice, Zamboni off of it. Nets about ready to get set. Teams about ready to take the ice. It looks like Dearborn just getting some final words of inspiration inside their locker room. Concordia starting to line up along the wall and they're ready to take the ice. The underdog Cardinals no doubt have to be fired up about this, making a, quite the run here after falling in the semifinals last year to Indiana Tech. They get their revenge last uh, yesterday afternoon, actually. That was their first win ever over Indiana Tech. Previously to that, they were 1-20. and 20 all, Well, now they're 1-20 all time. And the good news for Concordia, regardless of what happens today, a lot of their key guys will be back next year. Keppel and Janice, the only ones who won't be, and Tyler Groth as well. He won't be back, uh, but already familiar with life without Tyler Groth are the Concordia Cardinals. So a lot on the line here for them today. And a team on an upward trajectory. Talked a little bit about it earlier last year, 13 and 16. Now this season, they're up to 19. 15 and 3, the fourth overall seed after being fifth last year. And at this coming into the tournament last year, their ACHA overall rank was 45th. They're up to 30th now this year. For Dearborn, they find themselves right about at the same spot they were last year. Back against the wall, needing to put it together here in the conference tournament in order to make the national tournament. And of course, a big thing. On the line here is not just bragging rights for the conference championship, but between two teams that are potentially on the outside looking in, the automatic bid to next month's national tournament in Marlboro, Massachusetts, as the Wolverines take to the ice. Concordia already has their starting five along the blue line, ready to get this one started. We'll give it another second and then send it down to the PA for the announcement of the starting lineups and the national anthem. We'll go ahead and take care of that right now. Here is our That'll do it. 
about ready to get set for puck drop. Joe Hacker on your play-by-play -play today. Connor Hendrickson on the camera. We thank you so much for joining us here live from the Summit City for the WAC Conference Tournament Championship game. If you would have asked me three weeks ago who would have been here, I probably would have given you the stock answer. It would be Indiana Tech and Lawrence Tech, the then number one and two teams in the conference. Neither of them able to make it to championship Sunday. It's the University of Michigan Dearborn Wolverines. It's the Con Con Concordia Cardinals. And it's time to crown a conference champion. Everyone getting set. Coming to center ice. And for one last time in the WAC season, it's puck drop and away we go. Off the faceoff, it's controlled by Derek Hebner. He goes D to D and now it moves up the wall and off the stick of Quinn Beanick in deep. Eric pulls in, will play it around the wall, looking for West. West gets an early bump there from Hebner. You saw West really limited last night against Lawrence Tech, but eventually able to break three with a third period goal. And now here we go, he makes a pass over to Bird. Taken away by Tails though, as he wraps around behind his own goal. Tails skating it ahead, stick checked by Bird, loose puck picked up by West. West maneuvering with the shot, it's blocked. Bird in pursuit of that one, here's Colonin. Colonin bodied off the play, picked up now by Kusera. Twombly trying to work this one out. Comes back to Kusera and he plays it back around to the near side for Hebner. Cleared all the way out and now this is Josh McCarchuk, D to D to his partner O'Connell and up the ice, misses the mark on Kapari, goes all the way down and will get icing, 59 seconds in. Offensive zone draw to come for the Concordia Cardinals. Hunter Keppel out there. Friday night's overtime hero. Comes out to the point, fanning on the shot there. Now it goes to Keppel, fed through. Pulls and had the stop. It's a loose puck. O'Connell down there with Twombly. Keppel coming in. Looks like he has it. Now Twombly picks it out, trying to weave his way into the slot. Knocked away by Bigelow. Kieran O'Connell steps out. Turned over. Taken away by Rydell on goal line. He goes high and almost finds that top corner, but pulls it, able to get it off the bucket and out of play. So an early look there for Concordia. It'll be another offensive zone draw here. Concordia sticking with this same unit they've got out there. Rydell and Kapari to the faceoff. And it's batted up and down out of play through the netting. Looks like that was last touched by Keppel and a player for Dearborn. So the faceoff will stay exactly where it was and we'll do it again. Faceoff is won by Concordia Twombly. Almost had a look there underneath of Rydell. And hacking away at it are the Wolverines. Bigelow is able to just get it out, chips it past, and now here he goes. Continues to work that one into the corner. Now he's in pursuit of Blau. Bigelow tied up with the referee. Hartwell, a hammer shot. That one goes well wide of the mark, though. Emery, one-timer towards the net. It's blocked down. It's stuck between Potter and Blau. Keppel now gets it to the wall for Twombly. Over to Blau. He's able to just chip it out, and Emery retreats for UMD. Gets it over to Hartwell along the near wall, dumps it in after gaining the red line. Janice will stop it and leave it. Romback starting to move it up ice. Sees the yellow jerseys in front of him, tries to move up to Francois. It's a turnover, Petterly a little bit too quick there for Kudanko and it's sent back in by the Cardinals. McCarchuk looking up ice, tries to stretch it ahead to Kudanko. Ruled no icing, and now picked up by Temple. Temple up the wall, kept alive by O'Connell, now down low for Romback. Romback off the wall and out. O'Connell at center, will just dump it right back in, cross corner now into the near side. Center round back to Romback, under a little bit of pressure here, but able to navigate the pass to Troyer. Off of the stick of Bird, Francois picks it up in stride. Francois. 
Gets it over to Hebner only for a second though. Now McCarchuk looking to turn this play back up for UM Dearborn. Dumped across by Matthews Bird along the goal line. Pulling in now over by the hash marks has it. Bird tried to play it back around behind the goal, but now it's controlled by Growth. He lifts it all the way out. It's a bouncer, but Hartwell able to handle that one. Blau up the wall to Hebner. Hebner dumps it in, pulls and comes out to play it. He rims it around, and it does not get past Ediger. Hartwell in the corner. Misses Colonin, taken over by Ayat. Back down to Hartwell. He's able to handle that one. Colonin. Looking across the ice, finds Bird. Bird through the legs of Kyle Hebner. Now Colin in across the blue line. Colin in, drops it for Bird, a shot! That one is off the mark. Comes out to neutral ice for O'Connell. He turns it over to Hebner. Hebner across the line, one on four. And that opportunity is shut down by McCarchuk. Weston Beanick in a foot race. Kyle Hebner able to send it in now. O'Connell with Beanick coming in hot. Turns it over. Into the corner with it is Saar. He's pinned by Cullen in down low. Now it comes to Beanick in the near side. Beanick with the shot, it's blocked up, and that is out of play off the stick of Josh McCarchuk. 15-40 to play here in the first period. Tails and Kapari to the dot. A little bit of a tie-up, and it's controlled now by Hartwell. He's able to move it ahead, gains the red line, hammers it around, it gets past Janice. Bigelow able to stop that one, but it's a bouncing puck. It's loose, and Beanick able to handle it. He'll send it back down low for Romback. Romback starting to skate this one ahead. Weaves through and still has the puck. Gets through a couple yellow jerseys, but that shot deflected away by Emery. Into the corner by Tails. Emery has a man on him. It's Twombly. Separates man from Puck. But now Kapari controls. Kapari up ice. He's able to dish it off to Potter. Hebner plays it. And Kapari with it again. Retreats it back to McCarchuk. Puck bouncing around a little bit today. Not sure if uh, Puck maintenance was not properly done or if the ice is just not great. Seems like we've had more strange bounces in the early going in this one. We'll keep an eye on that as the situation develops. Kusera under the pressure from Kudanko. Rydell looking to steer it back ahead. Through the legs of Twombly, it's a turnover and sent back in by O'Connell. Janice will leave it for Hebner, who stops up. And Dearborn will set up the 1-2-2. Two, two. Dished over to Kusera. Sends it back across the ice. Gloved down by Petterly, but it still gets to Keppel. He's able to pat, poke it past McCarchuk. McCarchuk using the body there. And a nice play as Matthews gets it over to Kudanko, who finds some open ice. Janice will see that dump and attempt the whole way, and he's able to hang on for the whistle. Concordia still with some solid pressure on the early going here. Dearborn getting their way back into this one. Still 0-0, six minutes into it. West trying to play it out in front, looking for Cullinan. Benoit couldn't play it, and Cullinan sends it back in deep. Blau will reverse play for Growth. And Growth able to get it up to Rombach. This is Francois, actually. Francois bodied off there by Hartwell. Collision in the corner. It comes out to Emery right along the side of the goal. Now West working with Bird. Emery joining the rush for Dearborn. Bird cutting back across, looking for the shot from West. A little baseball swing on that one. Got a little bit of it, but not enough. Benoit brings it across, and it's deflected into the corner. Emery up for Bird, turned over. Eye it. Emery gets it back, and this time it is able to get cleared. Romback will send it back in, and pulls in. He's going to leave it for McCarchuk. McCarchuk, weird bounce off the stanchion. There are some doors over there, and that would be why there was the weird bounce. Temple sets up behind the goal. Forgot something for a second, but able to recover quickly, and Romback has to circle back 
for a second. Has Potter in his face. Coughs it up to Bigelow. Goes back down to Potter. Potter cycling, looking to get Bigelow down low. Ediger rims it around. McCarchuk is here for the Wolverines, though. Takes a shot, but it gets blocked in route. And that was blocked by Kyle Hebner. Both teams make some changes as O'Connell hangs out behind Polzin. And now they'll get the breakout started. McCarchuk stretched up the ice, and Potter gets a tip on it. Now it's in deep. Janis rimmed around to the far side. Skated up by Kusera. He's able to find Beanick. Beanick offside as Saar maybe about half a step too early on the draw there. And so we'll get a face off here in neutral ice. Eleven fifty-eight to play here in our first period of championship Sunday. Kusera tracks back and he'll go around to the opposite corner for Derek Hebner, but it's poked away by Matthews. He looked defeated out in front, but Concordia shut it down. Hartwell's shot is blocked by Saar, and Emery will have to just dump it back in as Dearborn tags up. Now Hebner will skate it up ice for Concordia. Knifing through neutral, lost it for just a second, but it's still in. Twombly leaves it for Hebner. Hebner takes a shot and pulls in, able to make the stop on it. Hebner had growth over here on the right point, calling for that one, banging his stick. But Hebner needing a change, just took the shot on goal. And it'll be an offensive zone draw now for the Cardinals. McCarch, that is O'Connell that's over on that side. He is able to get it out as offside is called. The draw will be right in front of the Dearborn bench. And it's won by Rydell. McCarchuk goes to O'Connell in the right corner, and he goes back to McCarchuk. McCarchuk gains the line and dumps it in. Gets it up to Bird. Now O'Connell trying to go back down to Bird, but it is intercepted by Blau. Now it's sent back down low. Rimmed up to Twombly. Trying to play in the middle. Take away. Here's West. Takes a shot. It's blocked, though, by Growth. Bird picks up the rebound. He comes out to the left point for McCarchuk. Karchuk, his shot's deflected. West, one-timer, stopped by Janice. We've seen West here a couple of times in the last few weeks. Have a rip. Now here's Keppel. He's on his lonesome, but he's making this one work for him with the shot, and it goes just wide. Over in the far corner is Troyer. Keppel is over there with him. O'Connell getting physical. He's able to get it up the half wall to Bird, and it comes into the middle for West. West. Takes the bump from Benoit and gets it back to McCarchuk. Emery starts back ahead for UM Dearborn. Potter with the redirect in, into the corner. First to take it away is Temple. He goes down to the ice. We're going to get a penalty here. A little bit of a delayed call from the referee, but it does come. And so the first power play of the game will go to Concordia. And it's going to actually be for hooking is the official call. And it is Dakota Potter. So the first goal potentially coming in the next two minutes. If you're a Concordia fan, you'd love to see that. I've had plenty of practice on the power play here this weekend. It's a battle. Emery doing a great job eating it, and then Kudenko able to clear it. So a very good start to that one in the first 15 seconds for the gentleman dressed in yellow again today. Brought up the ice by Rombach. He gains the line and hammers it around. Comes to the wall. Keppel is able to 
get there at the same time as McCarchuk, but it's McCarchuk who's able to get possession and he sends it right back down. The Cardinals make some changes. Rombach the only holdover and now he'll leave the puck for Ettinger and go make a line change of his own. Growth swings through and picks up the puck. Starting to build ahead of steam, makes a pass parallel to Ettinger. Gains a line and dumps it in. Pulls in behind the net. Aggressive play here, but it is going to be okay for the time being. McCartruck is able to get it. Now here's West, has a man to beat. It's Ayat, gets past him, but Rydell is there across the corner and Cohen with the shot stopped again by Janis. Janis, a couple of good opportunities turned away here for UMD, sent back across. That one a shorthanded chance. Cullinan trying to make it another one, but it's too far ahead of him. He and West will go for a change, having done their job. 27 more seconds remaining on the man advantage. Troyer now across the line, takes a shot and pulls it, able to block it away. Ettinger down low, it's loose puck behind the net. Back around to the near side, Kusera pinches in. Pass Kusera and out Ettinger and almost too many men, but not in the play there was Ayat who was the man changing. That was actually Beanick that was changing. That shot goes wide of the mark. Comes now to Hebner. His shot goes wide as well. Back to five on five. Puck comes to Bailey Bird, but it's taken away by Tyler Beanick. Poked off a his stick by Hartwell. Beanick gets it back into the point for Kusera. Shot through and pulls in. Able to get it and cover with 7.29 still to go here in the first period. But a couple of good chances there for UMD turned away. Concordia, an opportunity as well. We still are tied up at zero through the first half and a little bit of change of this period. Off the draw, Keppel with the shot. It's blocked by Potter. Now Potter brings it ahead. Just dumps it in. Janice will play it. Over to Rydell. Rydell drops it back for Rombach. And they'll set up the controlled breakout as Dearborn. Very content to let this kind of thing happen. Saw that a few weeks ago when they beat Indiana Tech and seeing it again here today. That 1 2 2 4 check that they've been employing. Very patient with it. Big collision there, but Conan dodges the worst of it. Now Potter will carry it through neutral. Kind of fans on the dump and attempt, so it allows an easier pickup for Temple. Drops it back to Growth, and Growth is going to have to circle back a little bit, but he finds some open ice over to Troyer. Troyer sends it off of Matthews. Growth shortens up, but it's off the face mask of Petterly and back into the Concordia zone. Drop back to Temple. Matthews hunting him down. Back down to Temple again in the far corner and played out. Goes to Hartwell in the neutral zone. He steps across the line and hammers it up and out of play. That'll be a face off somewhere in the neutral zone. It'll be a center ice face off. 6-17, still to go. Approaching the three quarter mark here of our first period. And off the face off, Troyer is trying to work it in deep, but Matthews has it for UMD. Benoit with the control, drops it back to Kusera, who goes right over to Troyer, sends it in on goal and pulls in Will Hold for the whistle. Pulls in coming to Dearborn straight out of high school, his last team, Livonia Stevenson High. Obviously a native then of Livonia, Michigan. And at the other end, Janice, a transfer actually from Davenport's ACHA D1 team. A senior this year, comes out to the point of shot, is redirected up into the corner at Saar. He cycles it for Quinn Beanick. Beanick for growth. That shot had been deflected wide. Hartwell, a hard rim around, but it is kept by growth, and he's able to send it back around behind the goal, rims it all the way around, in fact, to the other point, and then it's hacked out by Bird. Tails, intercepted easily by Bird. Into the corner, Bird 
with the bad angle. Might have been looking for the pass there. Bird to West, one-timer, and it's blocked in front with the cluster of bodies there. Growth skating it back up ice. Stops up at his own blue line and sends it across. O'Connell fumbles it. Ediger is in there now wearing the black jersey. He's got a shot and the rebound. There was a second chance at it after Polzin made the initial save. West gets around Temple and gets it to neutral, but Kyle Hebner takes it right back away for Concordia. He sends it across. Ediger with the shot. That one's blocked away by O'Connell. And that one goes off the side of the goal. Comes to Hebner. His shot stopped by Polzin. Four fifty-four now in the first period. As we've had a good start to this game, Concordia probably leading the shots on goal department. I'd say they've probably had the slight advantage here so far in this one through 15.06. And Concordia gonna have to send Pusera back out there. And he's gonna have to come out with, that looks like, Derek Hebner, and it is. As Dearborn has the rights to the last change, it comes out to Hebner. Gets around one, takes a shot towards the net, rebound loose out in front, a chance still there, but it's played to the wall by Bigelow. It was Ayat over there on the scene for Concordia, but he just couldn't locate it when he was down on his knees. In the far corner, Ediger. Has to track back a little bit and gets it over to Hebner. Hebner on the near side. Looks to find Kyle, but it misses his stick and will get icing called. Dearborn looks like they're gonna pick the right face off circle on this one. And with Petterly the centerman, his backhand will be towards the wall. Typically that's what you'll see be the favored side for centerman. And off the draw now, it's controlled by Growth. Growth will reverse for Hebner. And he gets up the wall to Twombly. Twombly, slow pass, it's intercepted. Petterly carries it back across, drop for Kudenko. Through the slot, he collides with the man for Concordia and it's taken away by Twombly. Gets it out to the right wing for Ayat. Ayat drops it for Growth. His shot goes wide. Around to the far wall for Hebner. Hebner fans on his shot. O'Connell off the wall to Kudenko, who's able to backhand it out to center. Matthews. He's got dropped there by Kyle Hebner. Big hit as he made that pass back down to Makar Chuck. Patience here from Josh McCarchuk out of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And now they go, finds West, tape to tape. West trying to get around Temple, now into the far corner with it. Still jostling for it. Get some help from Colonin. Colonin up for Bird, over to the left point, Hartwell. He winds and fires and scores! <laughs> U.M. Dearborn, strike first, and it is a rocket from Max Hartwell. That looks to be the fifth goal of the season for Max Hartwell. And it comes at a great time as with 3.16 still to go here in the first 20. UMD on the board first. Romback goes to over to his partner for Temple and back to Romback. Up ice, it's off and on and off the stick of Queen Binnick. He's got it again, over to the far wall now. Tails, down low for Beanick. Beanick trying to center, but he gets his stick lifted ever so slightly, just enough to disrupt that one, as Kapari drops it back from McCarchuk. Now for O'Connell, thought he might have Potter breaking, but he finds Kapari open. Down the left wing, Kapari will stop up, send the shot on goal, but Janis able to side that one to the back wall. Kapari battling for possession here. And we're gonna get a whistle and it looks like we're gonna have a neutral zone face off here. Might have had a hand pass or a puck out of play. 
Not exactly sure what the situation was there. Two thirty-two, still to play. First period. Petterly to the face-off, as is Benoit. It's up in the air, and it's controlled by Matthews. He gets it over to Kudenko, who shoots it right into the glove of Zachary Janis. Face-off will be to the left of the Concordia goaltender. Neither team opting to make changes. Kusera rims it around to the point. Play it out. Now coming in offensively is Troyer. Cutting into the middle, but it's poked off his stick. Big collision there. Francois goes in awkwardly, and that is going to be a penalty on Michigan Dearborn. Looks like Chance Matthews the guilty party here and would imagine it would be a boarding penalty if I had to guess and we're going to get checking from behind actually so two minutes on the board Concordia 0 for 1 on the power play to this point but would love to draw back even here before the conclusion of the first period. That one is kept at least for a second there by Rombach. Now here you go, two on one. It's West and Colony. Shorthanded West over to Colony. Broken up. Still there though. Back to West. Can he get it? No, it bounces out high. An opportunity diffused there by the Cardinals. Clint Beanick now up ice the other way. Stops up along the hash marks. And we'll get it right back now from Rombach. Beanick to the high slot. Goes over to Twombly. Quickly sent over to Rombach. Trying to send a shot on goal, it was deflected. Now Keppel has his pass deflected by Colin. It goes to Rombach now at the left point. Rombach shot through. Rebound is still there, and it's cleared away by the Wolverines. Colin able to backhand it clear into neutral ice. A minute and 13 still to go on the Concordia power play. Keppel with control, drops to Beanick. Beanick with the shot, and it's deflected up out of play by Bird. Concordia, a couple of looks there. Scramble in front, but Polzin made the initial save and his PK unit able to steer it away from there. And then Bird, a nice shot block on that last shot coming from Quinn Beanick. A couple years ago, Beanick, the newcomer of the year to the WAC. And one of the star players for this Cardinals team. Played over. To Ayat. His shot rebound was there, but pulls and able to smother it. Quinn Beanick now a junior. And has probably two more years of eligibility should he choose to utilize both of them. Ediger, his shot doesn't go anywhere. He's able to get it to Ayat, though. Got a little wrestling match between Bird and Rydell up at the point as we play on though. Growth backhands it through the slot. A weird bounce, but Polzin is able to keep it out. Tails along the half wall to the point for Rydell. Rydell's shot is blocked away by Polzin to the far wall. Down to 35 seconds left on this man advantage, and Dearborn is able to get it cleared out. 30 seconds now as we start to approach the final 30 seconds of the period. There's about a 10 second differential between the penalty clock and the game clock. Tyler Growth, onside play. He hammers that one, but holds and able to snag it. Down to the last 17 on the power play. 27.8 seconds remain on the clock. Pulling in and Kyle Hebner to the draw. One by Conan, now McCarchuk, pinned to the wall, battle in Susan, it's picked out of there by Kyle Hebner. Hebner and Twombly down there, Twombly out to the point for Derek Hebner. Derek fakes a shot, now it goes through, but it's blocked. O'Connell, that's a stinger, right out in front, Twombly sends it just wide. O'Connell might have caught that one right below the shin pad, uh, where there's not a whole lot of padding on the skate, 
and he still looks like that one's bugging him a little bit. But the intermission comes at a great time for him. There's the buzzer. So we'll go ahead and step aside through the first 20 minutes of the WAC Tournament Championship game. It's a 1-0 lead for the University of Michigan Dearborn Wolverines. We'll step aside. You're watching the WAC Tournament Championship brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Tech goes by many names. Business. Fine art. Forensic science. Some think it's just technical. But really, tech means everything. Scholarships, internships, championships. It's professors who make time for you one-on-one. -on -one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. You're busy. You expect to say no sometimes. But what you didn't expect was a chance to say yes to a college degree while keeping your life. Indiana Tech is now offering Chicago area students undergraduate and graduate degree opportunities taught online by experienced faculty who care. Learn more at one of the new Indiana Tech enrollment centers in Naperville or Wilmette. I can turn this in early? Sure, whenever you're ready. Embrace the unexpected at Indiana Tech. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that there aren't very many energy programs out there. When I researched all of the various programs recently, there are really only two or three accredited engineering programs. I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada originally. I came out here to Indiana Tech uh, to actually go for the energy engineering program because of its uniqueness and its ability to get hands on with the materials that I'm going to be using in the future. Well, a few of the things I think that sets Indiana Tech apart is, number one, you have very small classes. Uh, you have very close relationships with your professors. When you have a class of 10 people, it's much easier to get to know the professor and get in contact with him than if you have a class of 30, 40, or 50. You're going to have the same professors for the majority of your classes. You're going to have the same classmates for the majority of your classes. The more practical applications come in all the subsequent energy engineering classes. He transfers in a class that right after they're leaving the classroom and the board is filled with calculus. So in order to understand a lot of these topics, they're going to need to understand the calculus there. Calculus is the study of the, the rate of change, how fast things change. And depending upon whether it's energy engineering, industrial engineering, or whatever, they're going to need to use that and apply that. Professor Rome Mary, um, he stands out to me the most right now because when I first got here, I had to take calculus, Calc 1, Calc 2, and he's the one of the professors that teaches it, and he was just really was a very kind and helpful, helpful guy, and he did whatever he could to help us out. He was very funny, always had a way of creatively teaching calculus to us that not a whole lot of people can do. and. I think that and how he did it was all, this is going to be something that's going to stick for me for a very long time. The field work that Indiana Tech can provide here is, for example, we have a 10 kilowatt windmill that the students can work with. Uh, we have a geothermal system uh, for a couple of the buildings for Yuteng Su and for Zollner uh, that uses geothermal principles to heat and cool the buildings in the summer and the winter. The PV array system, training system that we have down here in the basement 
allows us to wire up the panels we have down the basement to set it up as a off the grid system or a battery bank system, which helps us because we can see every component of the system actually intertwining and how they work together with something that may not be easily visible when you're on the job site in, in a career. So definitely my uh, internship at Super Value Incorporated uh, was a very, very beneficial uh, program for me to be in. It was more based on the process and logistical side of engineering of, the, of my degree, not necessarily the design aspect. It helped me really learn how the most efficient way to do a, to do a task and some of the uh, boundaries that come with trying to make things more efficient. One of the things that we've been very fortunate here at Indiana Tech is that we've had a grant through AEP to help subsidize our students in taking some of the various trips in spring break. Over the last four years, I have taken, along with a couple of other chaperones, I've taken almost a couple of dozen students to a trip to Germany and Switzerland that focused on renewable energy. Uh, we've gone to Iceland last year uh, focusing on geothermal energy and we just recently returned from a trip to Costa Rica. Just last year I went to Iceland with a couple of, of our peers, not even just energy engineers but a couple of other uh, engineering majors went along with us and for me that was the highlight of my of my college time. I mean we learned a lot about like geothermal systems and how they converted to a country of basically like ran just by geothermal and but it wasn't just learning about that it was also learning about their culture as well you know and the past and the history and where they plan to go in their future and all those things combined I think really really kind of defines my experience here in Indiana Tech. You can be the smartest engineer in the world but if you cannot talk to or work with other engineers and non-engineers, it's very hard to get anything done. I try to teach my students that while you may not like writing, it's going to be a part of the job. You have to communicate if you're doing experiments or uh, testing hardware in the lab, you need to write it up so that other people know what you did and the customer may want to know how, what are the results of that test. Something I would remember most about the faculty would be just the one-on-one -on -one aspect of it and how open they are to hearing your problems and concerns and willing to assist you. Uh, India, Indiana Tech with the class sizes being so small, you really get that one-on-one -on -one talking, uh, everyday type relationship with your advisors and your professors. And having that is key to success, I feel, because being able to communicate with them and actually get your problems and questions across is going to help clarify things for you while you're in, in classes in school, which is going to set you up for success. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. You want to know what's possible at Indiana Tech? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Welcome back inside the Sport One Part View Ice House. First intermission here of the WAC Tournament Championship game. UM Dearborn leading it 1 0, but a couple of big saves to this point from Zach Janis, and it could easily be two or three. 
We'll have another one here in a second, but he's able to handle that shot from West, who we've seen unleash a few one-timers here in his day. But this one, making the stop on Joey Cullinan, a much better chance for UM Dearborn. It's fed into the middle by West. Cullinan trying to cut it back across, but just stopped there short-handed. And then Janice did what he could, but eventually UMD was able to break through this one from Max Hartwell it comes over to him here and he just tees off on that one and finds daylight with some traffic crossing in front and a nice celly on top of that. That has us at a 1-0 game. We'll take a look at the shots on goal provided by the University of Michigan Dearborn live stats page. It looks like shots on goal for this one are 14 for Concordia to just nine for Dearborn and that kind of tracks with the eye test. It has been a good game from Concordia but Dearborn, I think, has probably had the better of the scoring chances, uh, and they've obviously capitalized on their one. So for Concordia, it's just got to be about sticking to the game plan here, uh, trying to get more shots from inside the middle of the ice and continuing to kind of limit what the top line of Dearborn is able to do. Have uh, That top line for Dearborn has kind of had more success, I'd say, in the early going than they were able to have yesterday against Lawrence Tech, but still trying to... Uh, break free in the way that we've seen them do so before. That goal from Hartwell assisted by West and Bird. So obviously those guys are a plus one and Dearborn as a whole plus one through one. We'll go ahead and step aside. When we come back it'll be time to get the second period started. You're watching the WAC Tournament Championship brought to you by SummitCitySports.com Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. From the first day, I felt very welcome at Indiana Tech. I just really enjoy the classes and the vibe I get from all the other athletes and just the students here. Everybody's cool and everybody gets along really well. I'm currently a senior and since my freshman year, student life activities have really grown throughout campus and there are so many ways that you can meet new people. You can go bowling, you can watch movies, and it's just really important to get involved on campus. You have intramurals, anything from billiards to basketball. It's made student life very enjoyable. I love Fort Wayne because there's always something going on, like festivals, I walk a bunch of the trails here locally, there's great restaurants, there's always something fun to do. You can never be bored here in Fort Wayne. The school spirit at Indiana Tech is epic, it's everything. We had our first annual hockey game not too long ago. Everybody showed up, face paint, cowbells, Trojan hats, lawn gnomes, it was amazing. It makes it so worthwhile to be a warrior. Go Warriors. You want to know what's possible at Indiana Tech? Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Welcome back. Second period going to get underway here in about a minute. Both teams lined up at their doors, ready to head back out on the ice, just getting the referees with the nets back on. Through one, obviously just the one goal for Max Hartwell. That one coming around the 17-minute mark of the period. 
Two penalties so far in the game, both of those being charged to UMD. One of them hooking to Ch uh, Dakota Potter, and then the other one is to Chance Matthews. That is checking from behind. Dearborn able to kill off both of them. And they maintained that 1-0 lead. For those just tuning back in, shots on goal through the first period. 14 for Concordia, 9 for UMD. Faceoffs are a dead heat, 11 to 11 in that category. And this has been a good matchup so far, living up to the billing, a pretty even game throughout. And we'll see this period if the Cardinals are able to strike back or if it's UMD who can extend the lead or will we make it through this period with no goals. It looks like we've got a low scoring one on tap here as we are ready for the second period. It's pulling into the draw and it's tails for Concordia. It's a tie up and now it is controlled by McCarchuk as he settles this one down and he moves it over to his partner O'Connell. O'Connell gets it off the stick of Colonin. It goes in deep. Colonin going to be the first one on the scene there as West is going to get a penalty here for slashing as losing his stick uh, was the Concordia defender. That was on him. That might have been growth. So Dearborn continues to be the only team penalized. It takes 15 seconds on that one. We have a little conference though between the referees. So we'll see if they might be putting time back on the clock, maybe a little bit late on getting that one switched off. There was a buzz coming from the scorer's table right after that penalty was called. And Chris Haltener, the head coach for Dearborn in what is his 10th season now with the club. Getting the explanation from the official. Haltener has overseen quite a successful program over the course of his 10 years. National tournament appearances almost every single season, a very positive record. And at one point was ranked as high as number two in the 2019 season when they made a run to the national semifinals before falling to Iowa State. Now we are back down with the puck. It's another Concordia power play. Over two so far, right out in front. Loose puck in the slot, and it's played over to the wall by O'Connell. Cullinan is there, and he's able to send it down the ice. Rombach able to shield the puck from Bird. Cullinan trying to force him to the far wall, and Rombach rims it around. Beanick picks up along the near side and he sends it back down low trying to find Francois, but it goes all the way to Twombly and it's up at the right point now for Rombach. Back down low, Francois is there. O'Connell and McCarchuk trying to handle him. It's Twombly that picks up control. Rombach walks along the line then goes back to Twombly. Top of the right circle, his shot goes off of Polzin. Controlled by O'Connell. As Concordia, some good chances here on the early going of this power play, down to about a minute and five seconds. McCarchuk is under some serious pressure here. He's pinned to the wall by Francois. Twombly and Beanick are over there, but it comes out past all of them, and it's sent all the way down by Joey Cullinan. Quick play right up the ice from Janice to Ediger. Ediger into the corner. Potter closing on him. They don't collide, and it's played around the back of the goal by Tails, and now up to Grove. He steps into a one-timer, kicked away, rebound is there, and Ayat sends it off the post. So we still play on at a 1-0 game. We're now down to 30 seconds on the man advantage. Comes out to the left point for Keppel. Keppel with the shot, and it's blocked away by Kudenko. Now to Grove at the right side. Rims it around down low for Tails, into the corner for Ayat. Working his way up to the top of the circle, cycles back down to Tails. Artwell bumps him off, but Tails perseveres and gets it to the left point for Ayat. Ayat goes across. That's a shot. It doesn't get to the net. And Fanny on the clear was Emery still loose out there. A stick lift of a Concordia player allows it to come out. That is going to be offsides as Growth went to fire it back in, and he hit it off of Rydell. So we're going to have a center ice faceoff here with one second remaining on the penalty to Brendan West. So 
The puck will be dropped and he'll step out. Concordia, a couple of chances there, but unable to bury one. The closest chance, probably that one from Ayat. He sent it off either the side of the net, very close to hitting the post. Couldn't tell exactly, but now we're back to five on five play. Kapari with control of it. And it comes over to O'Connell. He plays it up the near side. Biglow able to work it in. Hebner goes back with Potter, and it's rimmed up to Troyer on the far side. Troyer settling it down, playing it patient. Goes over to Kusera. Kusera's play is intercepted by Kapari and rimmed back around. Potter to the far corner, now below the hash marks. Near corner, Kusera going to pick up. He's going to just eat that one for a second. He's able to get it over to Hebner. Hebner up to Tyler Beanick. Now Biglow with a shot. That one trickles harmlessly through. And now Kusera looking to stretch this one up ice. He's got Hebner on side. Hebner cutting to the net with a shot and another try, but pulls and stands tall and is able to make the save. Sixteen fifty-three to go in this one. Tails and Colonin to the face-off dot. It's one out to the point for Blau. Blau shot is seen by Pulsen. Another try by Tails, still loose at the side of the goal. But Colonin has it on his stick, and he's able to find the outlet pass into the middle for Emery, who gets it up to Bird. Bird. Rims it around. It gets past Janice now into the near corner. West is over there. Fans on the pass trying to come up to the point. So it's a loose puck and it's played backwards by Concordia where Blau will be able to reverse for Growth. Growth just settles this one down. And now will step out. Sends it all the way up the ice and he finds Saar. It's on and off his stick. Now Beanick rims it around. Over to Blau at the far side. West able to take this one away. Trying to work it clear and he does. Saar regrouping in neutral. Gets it back to Rombach. Rombach takes a look. It's redirected up off a pair of six. Petterly and Troyer. And Troyer the one who hit it last. But we'll see where the faceoff ends up. It looks like they're going to do it right in front of Concordia's bench. 16 minutes even. On the clock. Here in the middle frame. We thank you for joining us here for this Black Tournament Championship. Over to Rombach at the near side, dumps it on goal and pulls in, able to hold that one and he'll just cover it. Concordia elects to at least change their forward unit. Dearborn happy with who they have out there. Off the draw, it's one out to the left point for Rombach. His shot through traffic is blocked in front. It's still loose, but Petterly does a good job tying up Rydell and not letting him get to that rebound first. O'Connell, the defenseman joining the rush. He's down the left wing with the backhander trying to cut to the net. Another try. They keep digging at it, but now the whistle blows. We'll get a little bit of a gathering, but this isn't going to be anything too serious. Matthews exchanging a couple of shoves there with Keppel. And looks like that is going to be that. So the faceoff will be to the right of Janice. Kapari to the faceoff. It looks like I think that's Benoit, his opposite, and it is, but it's won by Benoit. And Hebner gets it up the wall to Troyer. Troyer too soft. It's intercepted by Kapari and just played back to Hartwell. The goal scorer so far for University of Michigan Dearborn. Looking to win their third WAC tournament championship. Haven't won one since 2020. The last two won by Indiana Tech, but they knocked out yesterday by Concordia playing their first WAC championship game. Troyer brings it ahead up the ice. Can't get past Emery. 
And now it's into the corner, picked up by Francois. Francois looking to center. It comes out to the point to Kyle Hebner. Hebner with the long shot. That one had a seeing eye. It looks like it gets up and hits the netting. Good turnout today, a neutral site game, but both teams with a solid contingency of fans. Would say probably more Dearborn fans than Con uh, Concordia, but Dearborn also to our right. They've got more room to kind of work with than Concordia does over to our left, which is the way that the rink is set up here. Off the face off, West. Finds Bird. Bird has Colnan joining the play late. Over to Colnan, backhander through, but stopped again by Janice. Taken away by Brendan West. Ayat will be able to get it out, but it's eventually recontrolled by Dearborn. O'Connell, more McCarchuk. And McCarchuk able to find Colnan. Stretched up ice for West. West, slow play, now he goes. Brendan West to Bird, but it's through the crease and the net comes off. Take another look at that last big chance for Dearborn as we get the net put back on here. Pass goes over to Colonin, but trying to send it back across the grain. Janice able to get the right pad on it and keep this at just a 1-0 game. Janice Probably a five high quality saves here today for Concordia. Looks like we are all good to go. Net back on. We'll follow that throughout the rest of the game. Kind of alluded to it a couple of times throughout the day yesterday. We're being kind of told that once that net comes off for the first time, that's when it can kind of start being a little avalanche of it, of the net coming off on a regular basis. We'll just have to see. Loose puck now played off the wall by Beanick. West has it in neutral, taken away by Tails. Tails dodges the hit on the stick of West. Colonin up the wall, massive bodies along this near side. Bird able to chop it in past growth and get it in deep. Dearborn needs a wholesale line change. They gotta do it quickly though. Looks like they're gonna be okay. Heads up for Beanick. He's trying to get around Emery. Emery had it played out of the feet of Beanick. Matthews couldn't quite handle it. Here's Sarge looking to go across for Beanick, but Hartwell gets the stick on it. And then the stick of Beanick is just sent as Hartwell hacking around. Shot goes wide. Emery and Petterly back there. It's picked up by Twombly, though. He gets it out to the left point for Tails. Tails shot through. That one had daylight, but it goes just wide to the left. Kept a just comes out past Blue Line. It's turned over. Here we go with Petterly. He's got Kudenko to the backside. Petterly with the shot, but it is blocked by Kusera. That one's going to hurt a little bit. Corralled by Hebner. He skates it up ice, cutting into the middle now. Three on two for Concordia if they hurry, but that pass is off the mark to Twombly, and that'll stifle the opportunity. Keppel plays it now, gives it over to Rydell. Probably not the wisest choice, as it was turned over to Bigelow. Off of Twombly's stick, it's going to be gathered by Keppel. Gets around Potter, now in down the right side. Tries to center for Rombach, but it's off his skate. Bigelow tried to touch pass for Potter, but it's taken away by Rydell. Blocker into the corner by Polzin. Rydell around to Twombly. Out to the point now for Rombach. Into the corner. Keppel settles it down. Puts it in the skates of Potter, but he re-gets it. Gets it right back. Now Twombly backhander. That one might have gone high of the mark. Bigelow off the glass, but Temple able to keep it. Concordia putting a pressure on now. Emery gets in the way of that shot. He's jostling with Keppel. It's a loose puck, but Kapari's going to be able to get to that one easily. He backhands it up the wall for Potter. Two on one for Dearborn if they hurry, but Potter a little bit slow to get going here. He's on his lonesome, fires that across the side of the net. And it stays wide. Temple has this one off the glass and out. Hartwell. Hammers it right back around. 
Comes all the way to this near side where it's picked up by Bird. Bird along the goal line towards the net. Tried to feed through to the far wall now. West picks it up on his backhand. Right along the blue line, he gets rid of it, but it's a turnover to Romback. Romback with a little pirouette, and he's able to go over to Temple. Picked up by Benoit for Romback, and he's able to send it out of the zone. About 11 minutes still to go here in the second period. Hartwell sheds Francois, who knocks the net clean off. And so we'll see where the faceoff is for this one. Going to have to assume it's going to be out in the neutral zone, and it looks like it's going to be. Francois didn't nick that. I mean, he caught that net pretty clean, knocking it off. Not saying it was intentional, but just a little bit funny of how he completely ran into it there. The draw is right out in front of Concordia's bench. And the draw is won by Kyle Hebner. Beanick sends it in deep. Makar Chuck. And over in the corner, Hebner takes a shot, pulls and is able to glove it. And we'll get another draw. It'll be to the right of the Dearborn goaltender. O'Connell controls off the draw. He's able to find a West. West, potential stretch for Bird. Here we go with Bird. Blau tracking back on him, but Bird gets the shot off anyways, and it goes wide. Growth lofts it out. O'Connell, McCarchuk have to get back there for it, and they do, and that was a fortunate bounce into the skates of McCarchuk right to his stick. West trying to take it away from Growth, and he does. He's taken down, tries to center, takes a shot instead. He had Bird going to the backside, and we'll get a little shoving there between Beanick and Colonin. And the Dearborn fans appealing for a penalty there as West was taken down, but aren't going to get one. Have to do the face off over again. A little bit of an encroachment there from the wall side of it. Hartwell with his shot through, but it goes well wide. Kusera. Hits it up past Saar. And back across by Hartwell. The uh, Hebner. Around to Saar. Saar chips it ahead, but it's turned over. Kudenko jostling for control. Hebner has it back. He just fires it back to try and get some breathing room. Hartwell towards the net, but he fans on the shot. Saar wrestling hard there with Hartwell. Dearborn bringing the intensity right now on the four check. Hebner off the wall up to Quinn Beanick. Beanick will play it in deep. Saar tries to go back for Beanick, but Emery was there instead. He dodges most of that check coming from Beanick. And he'll play it to O'Connell. Kudenko able to chop it out into neutral. And Keppel regroups. Takes his time, surveys what he's got, makes the play over to the near wall for Romback. He gets around Kapari and now is in along the blue line. Shot handled there by Polzin. Cycled to Keppel. Battle down low, Twombly. We're going to get it back to Keppel. Keppel had his shot deflected away by O'Connell. Swambly as Concordia starts to go to work offensively. Back to down low again for Keppel. Loose puck, Rydell gets to it along the wall, big low. We saw him eat a lot of time up here yesterday against Lawrence Tech and kills off a couple of seconds there. Ron back to Keppel, kicked by O'Connell and then steered out by Bigelow. Temple, now it's played by O'Connell. Back to Temple, he's under the pressure. Might have had it taken away from him, but it comes safely over to Troyer. His pass off the mark for Francois. The car chuck, now via Colonin, it gets to West. 
West stops up, still has it. Top of the slot. West with the shot for Bird. It was still loose in the slot, but stays out. McCarchuk center slot, and he takes the shot. And that one doesn't make it the goal and is cleared out by Concordia. They hold again. Right back up to West. It's off of his stick, but not still on it. He's put into the wall. And now Growth trying to build some steam. He gets around one, but it's knocked away from him. Played over to Troyer. Troyer over to Francois. Francois with the shot. Stopped. Another try. Pulls in again with the save. And will get a whistle. We'll take a look at that last sequence for Dearborn. As West dancing around, he gets the pass over. Bird almost had it, and then Colin in a try. He just couldn't get the stick on it. And finally, Concordia able to alleviate the pressure there. And we're actually getting a penalty here on Troyer. So now Concordia is in the box. Didn't catch that one. It might have been something after the whistle. Uh, and it looks like that's going to be for slashing. Shout out to the Dearborn website coming in clutch with these today. So the first power play of the day for UND as they look to extend their lead under seven and a half to play in the second period. Emery over to Kudenko. Kudenko, left circle, takes a shot, it goes wide. Bigelow picks it back up. Works it to the point to Emery, walking along the line. Emery feeds the shot through, bounces out in front. Bigelow sends it wide and almost redirects in off of Kudenko. Kudenko out to the point for Emery. Emery for Petterly down the right side, into the middle, looking for Matthews. But it was in his feet and cleared down by Tails. Dearborn will switch up their power play units. With Emery the lone holdover, he'll start this play ahead and would imagine he goes for a change of his own. He gets it to Colonin. Down the left side, played by Blau in the neutral zone. Bird has to regroup and wait for Colonin to tag up. And so he goes back to Emery. 60 seconds, killed off now by Concordia. West, in across the left side, cutting towards the goal, wrapping around, still with it. West feeds for Bird. Bird with the shot and scores! Dearborn converts on the power play. They lead it 2-0. And it's another assist from West, finished off this time by Bailey Bird. UMD's first team all-conference duo get the job done. It's a power play goal. And the 6-21 to play here in the second period. It is a 2-0 lead for the Wolverines. Off the faceoff, dumped right back in by Potter. Temple gets it to Romback, and Romback goes back across for Keppel in the middle. Rydell streaking up the ice, has Twombly with him. His shot is forced wide to the far side. Keppel, Concordia, needing a burst of energy. They almost get it there with the goal from Rydell. Passes behind Potter, icing is signal for and will be called here as we're up to 5.54. And Concordia going to take a timeout here. Interesting timing. We'll use one as well when we come back the rest of the second period. The WAC Tournament Championship brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything.
Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Welcome back. Coming out of the Concordia timeout. Still have 5.54 to go here in the second period. Thank you for joining us here today. Connor Hendrickson on the camera. I'm Joe Hacker. I've got your play-by-play -play guiding you through this WAC Tournament Championship game. Off the draw, it's carried ahead by West. This is a dangerous sight. West gets alone, but Janice comes out to play it, and wisely so, as he would have had West bearing down on him there. O'Connell playing it patient, letting his teammates get in position. Bird gets around a man, knocked away by Ettinger. Francois plays it back up, and that would have been dangerous for Groth if he would have connected with the helmet of O'Connell with a little bit of a high swing there. Francois, hard rim around, gets it up to Ettinger. Ettinger plays it into the corner for Francois. Francois has the jump on Emery there after Emery kind of blew a tire. We get a battle in the corner, three on two, advantage for Dearborn. But it is the Cardinals that have it, and just as I say that, it's taken away. Hartwell trying to turn on the Jets, brings it up the ice. Roth knocks it back towards Janice, who will hang on. Offensive zone draw for Dearborn, having a much better period this time around than they did in the first, but still one goal apiece. And Concordia, I would assume, is still leading in shots on goal, but yet without one. Can't find the one pass pulls in. Back around to the far side, it's Kusera. He's able to get it up to Saar, who chips it into the corner. Quinn Beanick in there first for Concordia. Phoenix up the wall, has it taken away by Matthews. Matthews for Hartwell. Plays it up the wall to Kudanko. It's taken over by Hebner. Hebner jostled off the puck. It's controlled by Tails as he dumps it in deep. Pulls in. Gets it to Hartwell in the corner. Hartwell around one, had it knocked away though by Blau, but Kudanko with it. He finds the pass across to Hartwell. Hartwell looking for goal number two of the afternoon. Played out to Pedrilli along the near side in neutral ice. He just drops it all the way back for O'Connell. O'Connell looking at what he's got. He decides Vakarchuk is the best option. Now it gets up to Bigelow and goes parallel to Potter. Potter gets it across for Kapari. Kapari had a potential chance there, but we're just breaking a second too late. Bigelow keeps it. Now Bigelow carries it down low. Takes a shot, bad angle, but Janice makes a stop. Kapari looking to cycle, but it's picked up by Hebner. Hebner goes across, and Potter had the redirect, but it didn't get out of play. O'Connell quickly up the ice for Bird. Bird able to dodge Tyler Beanick. Now Bird across the line. Into the right circle, takes a shot, and it's stopped and then cleared to the wall by Rombach. Kyle Hebner capitalizes and now carries it across the line. Hebner goes down low for Keppel. Keppel trying to center, but it's intercepted by West. West comes cross ice for Bird. Bird working alongside Colonin. Feeds it to him. Colonin trying to send it on goal, but it goes wide. West, he's planted into the wall. And we're going to get a penalty on that one. It'll be on Tyler Beanick. We'll see what the official call is. And it looks like it's going to be roughing. So, Dearborn, one for one on the power play so far. It took them a minute and nine seconds on the slashing penalty to Troyer to capitalize. And they have another chance here, looking to make it 3-0 before the second intermission. And that would, of course, be huge if you are a UM Dearborn fan. That one just off the top of the glass does make it down the ice. Pulls in with some solid airtime on that one, but it was handled by Beanick. Now in the skates of Matthews, he has to drop it back to Emery. 
Concordia aggressive on this penalty kill, but that'll force Dearborn to find the weak side of the ice, and they do there, brought up by Emery now down the left wing. Emery, he's planted into the wall. That time there is no penalty. Controlled by Matthews, out to the center point for Petterly. Petterly finds a shooting lane, but it's blocked by the shin pad of Bigelow. Kudenko, now he's out to the center point. Works his way over to the left side. Gets it to Emery. Emery with his shot. It's deflected. Loose out in front. Another try by Bigelow, but it's covered by Janice. 50 seconds gone on the Beanick penalty. 33 seconds will remain in the period. Once the penalty expires, assuming Concordia is able to kill this one off and keep it at just a 2-0 deficit. Two goals, some refer to that as the most dangerous lead in hockey. So Dearborn would love to get one more here. McCarchuk under some pressure from Keppel here, but calmly able to shed that and settle the play down. Cullinan through the neutral zone, he'll carry it across. Cullinan trying to dangle his way into the corner, but it's taken away. Loose puck picked up by Growth. He's able to clear it out of the, that was out of the zone, and now it officially is. It's on the stick of West. To O'Connell, he's able to get it into the corner, down to 30 more seconds before Tyler Beenick steps out of the box. The play comes back down into the Dearborn end. Karchuk gets it up to Bird. He leads the pass for West. West dodges Rydell, trying to dangle through another one, and it's hammered down the ice by Romback. Ten more seconds here on the power play, and it looks like Concordia has killed this one off. Bird through the middle. He works his way out to the left. Finds Kapari. Kapari with the shot, and it's stopped by Janice. Looks like he got the blocker on that one. Back to even strength. Final 25 of the period. Twombly up into the neutral zone for Hebner. Hebner trying to dance his way around Hartwell. Loose puck, and Rydell collides with Kapari. Picked up by Hebner now. Into the corner, loose puck comes out. Romback trying to close in on this one, but he can't control it. And that is going to do it for the second period through 40 minutes. It is 2 0 in favor of UM Dearborn. They are 20 minutes away from an automatic bid to the ACHA National Tournament and a Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference championship. We'll step aside with a day two recap video. When we return we'll have the intermission report. The WAC Tournament Championship brought to you by SummitCitySports.com For Hebner in the left corner. Stretched up ahead making a break as Benoit has Francois breaking. Oh. Francois with the shot and Barnhill with the wow, save. It's, it's loose. loose. Ali has Derek Hebner with some moves trying to work it back in but it's on the stick of Austin Buck. Now he stretches it up for Ali. One on one with Kusera. Ali with the help for Smith, and it's stopped wow. by Janus. Boy, boy. Does a good job to fight that one back, though. Plummer with the turnover to Twombly. To Hebner, a one timer. That's blocked. Rebound is there, and oh, they score. Oh, Campbell came in. He Dugan taking down. Beanick is over there. Ali gets it Here out to go. Dugan. Dugan trying to turn on the Jets. Here we go. TJ Dugan with the move, he and he stopped. That might have hit the pipe. post. I think it did. It was Benoit with Mickey Fork all over him for a second. Now Benoit will play it towards the goal. It's gloved by Carruthers. Oh, Loose puck. It. Plummer is able to slow it up. I with the shot, and he scores. So and, uh, if there was baseball, we'd be caught. With control for the Warriors. Smith now skating up ice. He's across the line. Wrapping this one around, still hanging on, tries the wrap around, it's it scores! Now they're washing it, they're washing it. Ediger dumps it in, goes in deep, Buck is back there, turns it over to Ediger. Ediger trying to wrap it in, scores! Concordia leads, 3-0. The left wall sent towards the goal, Hyatt had a potential chance there, goes to Rydell now near side. 
He works it out to the point for Kusera. His shot through traffic oh, and scores. He never saw it out to the blue line to Chabot. Dufort at the left point. He'll trade with Chabot. Keeps the puck. Over to Grinkwitz, the one timer. Mm. But a roller still Ooh, there. Shit. And oh. it stays out. It's the best they're looking here, so they've got to get her going. His tails. Dufort. Last man back. Got to be careful here, and here you go. It's a breakaway coming the other way for Tails. Can Dugan catch him? Yes, yes he, he can. Does. Good stick on that. Dufort. And a little bit of a sketchy play there, but it works out. Here we go with Dufort. Goes over to Lowe. Down to 40 seconds. Lowe cutting to the net. Lowe with the shot. Rebound is there, and the second chance opportunity is kept out by Janus. Again to Chabot. Right out in front. They and score! They, get it. they finally get one. Power play goal. Driving there is number 16, Bradley Scott. Heads up for Ooh. West. He's lit up. What a good hit. Seconds, and then stepping out of the box will be Koontz, and we'll be back to five on five. In the corner, Petterly out for Kudenko. Kudenko cutting across, heads it, and takes the shot and scores. Oh, it was technically even strength because the. We at least have one as that goal. Oh, oh here we go. go. Here's, a, uh, here's a breakaway attempt for Hire. Hire Hire shorthanded. Oh. That is going to be a penalty yeah, shot. Yeah, that's should be. Let's see. In. Let's see. Everyone is set, and we get the whistle. Here we go. Hire takes it up and ranges over to his left, coming in with speed. Hire with the shot. Oh. It's off the post. Oh. Down low. Cesarini had his stick tied up. It's into the corner for Bland. And that's a oh, weird wow. angle shot. And they think it's in. Is it in? Well, Lawrence, no the Blue signal. Devils are celebrating, but there's no signal. So the official did not come up right away to look. He just slid up there. Thank of West. Loose puck in the center circle. And here you go. Here's a chance for Lawrence Tech. With oh. the shot was Koontz. But it was stopped. Trying to go just on. Yep. Lawrence Tech will win the draw. Matavi oh, broken up. Here Bird. comes Bird. Bird with the shot. It's stopped by Kroll. Wow, and plays it. Petterly. Now it's controlled by Bigelow. He goes to the point. Kudenko. Kudenko. His shot through oh, and they score. Wow. Redirected in by Bigelow. Wow. So. Maybe a little bit of a matchup situation here. Now here comes West, fresh off the bench, down to the left wing, trying to feed for Potter, and it's stopped by Crow. Wow, and he looked down and he got it. And I'm not. He tries to work this one out, gets it out past Bird. Now West into the neutral zone, doesn't have much help. Puts it in the middle, O'Connell. Oh. O'Connell with the chance here still. It's wrong. He scores. he scores. Wow, he was getting tied up. On the ice, no icing going to be called. As that is Gents going back there with McCarchuk. Oh, he right here's it. a shot. Oh, Rebound still wow. there, and Colin guides it to safety as pulls it wow. is up to it. Then pull of it, utterly to Matthews. He tries to kick it back outside to Kudenko. Kept alive. This is Priest. Emery away from him. There's a shot Ooh. from the wall. Still loose Loose. in front. Here it comes. comes out to the point. Sample with the shot. Oh, and they scored on the screen. I think they got it in the fiver when he was down. Cross trying to find Bird. Bird pokes it past. Here we go with Bird. Bird switching sides with the shot. Rebound oh, there for wow. Conan, and it still stays wide. To the near side. Colin in with it. Goes to West, and he oh. scores a rocket shot. Wow, on the one-timer there. Yeah. Wow, dangerously, though. West with the chip. Now here comes Colin in. Has Bird with him, but there's a trailer. Colin in switching sides with Bird with the shot. Crow with the save, and it's cleared out. To safety by Lawrence Tech. Over there, his shot goes a bit wide. McCarchuk as we're under three. West, center out in front, a weird bounce, and they score. It's Bailey oh, Bird. Oh, man. Crawl could not get a hold of Welcome back inside the Sport One Parkview Ice House. Second intermission here of the WAC Championship game between Concordia and University of Michigan Dearborn. It is a 2 0 lead for UMD. Goals from Hartwell in the first period and in the second it was a goal from Bailey Bird. We will take a look back at that goal from Bird. A power play marker coming with 621 still to go. As they are able to find the back of the net. Now Concordia with their backs against the wall here. For their season it is do or die if they lose today. That will be it for them. They need to find a way to cut back into this Dearborn lead. They've got 20 minutes to do it. Through the first two periods, shots on goal are a dead heat. It is now a 21-21 split. 
between the two teams. Faceoff still even as well, 20 to 20. So now that kind of gives you the idea of how this game has gone. The only stat that's not really even is the goals. 2-0 in favor of Dearborn. Penalties, three penalties for the Wolverines, two for Concordia. And we will have no carryover time. The penalty to Tyler Beanick had expired. Assists so far in this game. Brendan West has two of them. Bailey Bird has an assist to go along with his goal. And Joey Cullinan has an assist as well. We'll take a look at some of the other replays from that second period. We've got about, looks like, three more. We'll go ahead and see what we have here. No doubt, a couple of chances for Dearborn. This one, an opportunity for Concordia. But the save made here by Poles and his growth hammers that one. The rebound there by Ayat. Kind of fanned on it. Well, that was a good look. I believe that was on a power play for Concordia. We'll go and take a look at this one. This, an opportunity for the Wolverines. Coming with the pass across to Cullinan. But Janice, as he has been throughout this game, up to the challenge, he's been terrific for Concordia. Despite the two goals against, he's seen a good number of shots, a good number of high-quality shots, more importantly, and he's turned a lot of them aside including that one and Concordia the defense there as well combining to keep that puck out of the back of the net and then a little bit later after that came the goal from Bird. We'll take a second here to recognize some of the all-conference honorees from yesterday. The first team all-conference announced it is Brendan West and Bailey Bird, Max Hartwell as well representing Dearborn and playing in this game. Cam Chabot and Cole Barney from Indiana Tech and Spencer Kroll out of Lawrence Sack, the first team all-conference goaltender. Moving on to the second team all-conference, Joey Cullinan and Josh Karchuk featured in this game as well. They are one of the members of that second team. Matej Krasny and Alex Potter there for Indiana Tech. Themo I for Lawrence Tech. And Anthony Carley, or the Rochester goaltender, is in there as well. He was one of the all-conference goaltenders. The last year, Rochester completed a full season, uh, which would have been back in 2020, uh, before the COVID pandemic put a halt to uh, the end of the 2019-20 season before the national tournament. And one last look at some of the overall awards, the player of the year, Brendan West, no doubt about that one. If you look at the ACHA national scoring page, West and Cam Chabot are the only ones on there from the WAC. Brendan West is second overall in the country. The newcomer of the year is freshman Bailey Bird, and he is going to be a tremendous asset to that Dearborn program moving through the next four years. The coach of the year goes to Frank DeCristofero of Indiana Tech, the top-seeded team, and only had three losses all season coming into this weekend. One of them was a couple weeks ago to this Dearborn team, a 5-0 win here on Indiana Tech's home ice. That is the moment that I think Dearborn really showed that they have turned it on late in the season. And we see him here with a 2-0 lead in this tournament championship game. Speaking of Dearborn still, the champions of character coach goes to Chris Haltner, the Dearborn head coach of just about a decade. That'll wrap it up for the awards. We won't go over the champions of character team, but one nominee on that team from each of the seven WAC conference teams. We'll go ahead and step aside one more time. When we come back, it will be time for the third period of the WAC Tournament Championship brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. 
Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. From the first day, I felt very welcome at Indiana Tech. I just really enjoy the classes and the vibe I get from all the other athletes and just the students here. Everybody's cool and everybody gets along really well. I'm currently a senior and since my freshman year, student life activities have really grown throughout campus and there are so many ways that you can meet new people. You can go bowling, you can watch movies and it's just really important to get involved on campus. You have intramurals, anything from billiards to basketball. It's made student life very enjoyable. I love Fort Wayne because there's always something going on, like festivals. I walk a bunch of the trails here locally. There's great restaurants. There's always something fun to do. You can never be bored here in Fort Wayne. The school spirit at Indiana Tech is epic. It's everything. We had our first annual hockey game not too long ago. Everybody showed up, face paint, cowbells, Trojan hats, lawn gnomes. It was amazing. It makes it so worthwhile to be a warrior. Go Warriors. You want to know what's possible at Indiana Tech? Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Third period just moments away here as the two teams take to the ice for the final 20 minutes. Will it be the final 20 minutes of the game or just the final 20 of regulation? Let's find out. I'm Joe Hacker. I've got your play-by-play. -play. I'll be guiding you through the remainder of this hockey game. Connor Henderson alongside me all weekend long on the camera. Goaltenders in their creases, getting the ice scratched up, ready to go here. Referees getting set. Players getting loosened back up after the 15 minute break. Let's see what's in store. It should be a good ride here through the last 20 minutes. Will there be more? It's time to find out. It's the third period of the WAC championship game, and we are underway yet again. Keppel right off the faceoff. We'll send it in deep for Concordia. Kieran O'Connell back there. He is trying to box out Twombly and does so, trying to send West up the ice. West takes it away from Keppel. Sent across the ice to the right wing for Bird. Circles back up off of the stick of Colin, and now comes into the near corner. West. Pinched to the wall by Growth. Colonin though provides some help. Battle going on down low. And it comes out to McCarchuk. He was hanging out around the top of the circle. He's lit up. Down goes McCarchuk as a few players collide from each team. Down below the goal. Growth. Now Colonin. Locking up with growth. West takes it away, has some open space, feeds it down low to Conan, and they score! Joey Conan with the redirect, and it is 4 0 Dearborn. Excuse me, make that 3 0 as they are quick changing the scoreboard. Look at that, so smooth from Conan as he's able to redirect that one in from West. That is a big goal quickly here in the third period for UMD. Off the draw, right back to it. Brendan West now three assists today. Bird might have three points as well if he gets an assist on that one. Colin in a goal and an assist as that top unit that Lawrence Tech did such a good job trying to limit yesterday. Has really been running the show today for Dearborn, capitalizing on their opportunities. And now the task a little bit taller 
for Concordia to come back. Hartwell, run off the play by Beanick. Now Saar, trying to work it in deep. Kapari, fights off the stick checks and gets it to Emery. Gets past Temple and he'll have to chase it back into his own end. Francois sends it in deep. Pulls in. We'll leave it there for McCarchuk. He rims it around and out past the stick of Temple. It goes all the way down, but no icing going to be called here. Janis into the corner for Rombach. Rombach skating this one up the ice himself. Fires it around. Comes along now to the near wall. Francois into the middle. Stepping into that is growth and pulls in a nice kick save. Francois, bodied away by McCarchuk. Petterly comes in with the help. Chipped up the wall to Matthews. And now cleared down by Petterly. This one should be and will be icing. Off the draw, O'Connell skates it up the ice, chips it ahead looking for Matthews. Blau picks it up and he'll just drop it back for Growth. Now Tyler Growth, a late addition this season to the Concordia team. Made second team all conference I believe last year and playing in his ninth game of the year for the Cardinals today. Gets the redirect from Iatt but it's up and into the netting so that'll stop play with 16.50 to go. Off the draw, controlled by Hebner. He gains the red line and sends it in. Bolzen comes out, plays it right back up, the strong side to West. West able to take it down, but he's taken down to the ice. And he's going to get up a little bit slowly, but looks like he's going to be all right. Twombly carries it ahead. Bird pestering him. He's able to get it off to Keppel. Keppel goes back across. Twombly in the middle for Rydell, but it's broken up. Now Bird kicks it out. For West, he goes back across now down the right wing is Cullinan. Cullinan with the shot, and Janice is able to hang on. Cullinan, the captain of this Dearborn team, coming into the weekend, had 17 goals to go along with 27 assists for a total of 44 points, and has found... Probably every bit of the six points needed this weekend to cross that 50-point plateau. And Brendan West, coming into the weekend, only needed one to cross the 70-point mark. And he's probably already at 75 if I had to add those back in. Rombach gets it up the wall to Saar. He's tied up by Kapari. On to the stick now, Abinik. Phoenix takes a shot, it goes high. Comes around to the near side. Potter, he's able to chip it out in the neutral for Rombach. Rombach D to D to Hebner. Hebner surveys, gets it off the stick of Beanick and in. Pulls in, will play it. Saar is able to stop it up and he's got control in the near corner. Goes over to Benoit, maybe looking for the one-timer but he didn't get it. Hebner into the corner. Now Beanick down low. Tried to center for Saar, but it was broken up by the Wolverines. Kapari high off the glass. He's able to clear it out to neutral. Kusera, after it went off the top of his helmet, able to locate it. And now Saar brings it across the line for Concordia. Bouncing putt kept in right along the blue paint by Hebner. Along to the far side half wall now. Working into the corner. It's taken by Kudenko. Kudenko rimming it up the wall. It's in the skates of Hebner. Matthews trying to get it cleared out. Troyer over there trying to keep it for Concordia. Still being battled for, and now it's high and out. Looks like Emery, the last one to touch that. 
Schroyer gets it up, looking for Francois, but it's tape to tape for Hartwell. Hartwell uses the net as a bit of a blocker, and now he charges up the ice. Max Hartwell has Colonen breaking, tries to take the shot, but sticked behind the goal by Blau. They chip it out past West. Francois sends it cross corner. First one there is going to be Blau. He sends it out in front. Backhand try by Francois. Is stopped before it gets to the net by O'Connell. Francois again now. He's in the far corner. Over to Hebner. Works his way to the near side. He stops off the circle. Takes the shot. Goes high. Loose puck out in front. And it's controlled by Bird. Bird is able to steer it to the safety of the neutral zone. Taken away by West. He wrestled it free from growth, but it was taken back away. Ediger. Takes it away from Cullinan. Now Cullinan has it back. And off the glass, it goes out. Goes all the way down, and Temple will start to play 200 feet for Concordia. Able to get around a couple, chips it to Emery, who plays it just back down the ice. Francois, excuse me, Rombach. Off of the stick of Temple, and now it gets into the corner. Emery is bumped there by... Hebner, Ayat, picked up by McCarchuk. He's starting to build some speed. Hebner will backhand it in. Emery gets it back to neutral. Ayat is still offside, so Concordia will have to just dump it in and wait for Ayat to tag up as they do, and that'll allow Dearborn a little bit of breathing room. Kapari sweeps through, but McCarchuk keeps it. Sent up the ice. Potter with the redirect. It goes into the far side corner, and now Concordia will get a little bit of time here to set it up. Picked up by Hebner. He starts it ahead. Working his way along the near wall. He gets past Matthews into the zone. Rips it right into the shin pads. Hartwell trying to feed it through. There was a rebound. Kudenko on the backhand. He's able to get it out to the point. Kept alive by Twombly. Over to Keppel. He gloves it down. Takes the shot and it's blocked by Hartwell. And cleared out by Kudenko. Sent back in just wide of the goal by Hebner. O'Connell chips it out to the neutral zone. Offside play. They'll have to tag up. It allows Petterly some time to control here. And he goes back to the near corner. Hartwell hammers it up the ice to Matthews, who sends it in deep as the Wolverines dump and change. And we have a penalty coming now to Concordia. As the referee's arm extended, it'll be Rydell to go. We'll see what the call is. And again, this official doesn't want to give the signal, but with live stats courtesy of UM Dearborn's website today, we are going to be able to find out here as soon as they get it inputted. It'll be roughing the call to right out. Up to the point from a car chuck as the Wolverines have a power play goal to this point so far in our one for two. At the first penalty of this third period, McCarchuk almost fumbles it. It's a wrestling match and he's taken down to the ice, but West trying to keep it for UMD and he does. Colonen is able to skate it ahead. Stops up, he's put into the wall. Phoenix able to take it away. Rimmed around to the point, Emery keeps it in. D to D to the other point from McCarchuk. McCarchuk. I'm going to go across. There's a shot for Bird, but it's stopped by Janice. It might be 3 0, but Zachary Janice has made sure it is not more than that. He has been terrific on a number of Dearborn scoring opportunities. Face-off sent 200 feet by Concordia as they have a minute and 10 seconds still to kill off here. Still trailing by a score of 3-0. Hartwell across the line. He's got one of them for Dearborn. Looking for another. Feeds it. Looking to Potter, but it's off of his skate. Now it's controlled by Growth. Growth across the line on side. That shot is blocked by O'Connell in the corner. Growth trying to center it, but blocked again. Three on one in the corner, and of course it is Dearborn that comes away with it. 
as you would expect with that numbers advantage as Growth finishes a hit on Bigelow over on the far wall. Down to 35 seconds. Hartwell in no rush here has been a trailing him but gets it off in the nick of time to Potter. He'll stop up along the hash, feeding into the middle for Kudenko. Kudenko has a man crashing the net, but he hangs on in the left circle. He goes for a little dance to McCarchuk. McCarchuk feeds a shot, and it goes just wide. It looks like that one was hit off of somebody in front of the net. There was a cluster of bodies. Down to the last eight seconds of the penalty to Zane Rydell. That should just about do it. It's brought up ahead by Beanick. Phoenix has McCarchuk watching over him, trying to cut to the net. Now he's into the corner, and McCarchuk goes into the uh, boards, skates first, and crashing in to Polzin is a Dearborn player, and that is Blau, and nothing further coming from Dearborn in response to that one. Didn't catch what sent Blau in, and it looks like we've got a penalty, actually, to Kudenko. And it's for tripping. So now after killing one off, well, that would probably be how Blau went crashing into the goal. I had to assume. 9.56, now it's Concordia with an opportunity. Trailing by three. Could really use one here, but there might be a shorthanded chance the other way for West. He's one on three, though. He's going to have to try and eat some clock up here. He sends it over to Colonin. Colonin into the corner. Still with it. Trying to get it to West. Now he does. West gets around one, but he's bodied off by Keppel. It goes conveniently right to the wall where he was going after he got hit, and he's able to play it all the way back down to the Dearborn end for his teammate O'Connell. So it's a Concordia power play, but as they make changes, Dearborn looks like they're the ones setting up the breakout to go all the way down the ice. It comes all the way around now to Bird in the offensive end. He gets hit, and that is going to be a penalty on Growth. He knew it as soon as it happened that there was going to be the penalty, still appealing it, and Bird a little bit shaken up on the play. That one borderline a knee, but we'll see what the official call is. And it is going to be kneeing. Bird gingerly making his way back to the Dearborn bench. And with 9-12 to go, we'll see if we see him again. Hopefully something he can just shake off a little bit. Maybe a little bit of a stinger. He's getting talked to by the training staff that's on hand here this weekend. And looks like he's just saying it's a little bit of a stinger and shaking off too much assistance. So we'll play four on four for a minute 15 now as it comes to Saar. Saar out to the far wing, and now he gets it back, coming through the middle of the ice. Trying to get in on goal, and he does, but pulls him, is able to play it away. Emery trying to put Saar into the wall. Controlled by Emery, and he'll give it off to Potter. Potter leads the charge up the ice. Cutting in the middle, takes the shot, but it's gloved by Janice. Fifty-one seconds remaining in the four on four, and then it'll be about 40-ish seconds. And I think 43 seconds of a power play for Dearborn coming out of that. Beanick able to get it to Hebner. Goes back down to Tyler Beanick. Gives it over to Keppel. Keppel back to Tyler Beanick, but it's kept away. Beanick gets it back. He goes to the point for Hebner. Hebner trying to find Beanick, but it goes into the corner. Behind the goal, McCarchuk will float it around to Bigelow. 18 more seconds at four on four as Bigelow carries it up the ice, and he'll just swing it into the corner. Hebner is back there, and he'll start skating it up the ice. Five more seconds at four on four as West loses his stick. Hebner dishes it off to Keppel into the middle, but it's just in front of the stick of Twombly. Now it's a power play for Dearborn, picked up by West. He's got Bird with him and Colin, and it's a three on two, but there's a trailer. West over to Bird. Bird looking to go back into the middle, trying to find Colin. 
Tails controls and sends it 200 feet down the ice. 20 seconds remained for the man advantage for Dearborn. There's seven minutes and 26 seconds away from winning this hockey game for Concordia. Now is the time, trailing by three. It's got to start happening once they kill the last three seconds off, which they've officially done as Growth steps out of the box. Petterly up to Matthews. Matthews heads up. He's put in the wall by Quinn Beanick. Here we go. It's Bird. He gives it off to Matthews. Matthews with the shot. It goes high and wide. Ediger plays it into the middle. Tails sends it the length of the ice. Doesn't know that the penalty's expired as that is icing and he will have to stay out. Six fifty. Still to play here in the third period of this WAC championship game. The second seeded Wolverines looking for their third tournament championship. The fourth seeded Cardinals looking for their first. Their best season so far for Concordia. And the good news for them, many of their key players still have eligibility remaining. To the near side. Kapari can't take it away from Keppel. It's played back to Blau. He misses the fire to Ediger, and it's played backwards. Lekarchuk will regather in his own slot. Reverses to O'Connell to find some open room. Ayat bringing the pressure. Kapari fires toward the near side, which is his far. Over to Ayat. Able to collect this one, but he turns it over to Bigelow, who coughs it up to Keppel and regroups with Temple. Temple, it's on and off the stick of Benoit. And now Hartwell behind his own goal. Gets it up ice for Bird. Expect to see a heavy dose of this line for Dearborn the rest of the way. West still has it, looking. And it's taken away by Troyer. West able to fight it right back. Over to Bird, left circle. Bird with the shot, and Janis able to make the save. Shots on goal to this point in the hockey game. It's 28 to 23 in favor of Dearborn with 545 still to play. Off the faceoff. It's below the goal line. Bird and Cullinan are in a battle with Rydell and Temple. And now it's a three on two in favor of Concordia as it looks like that's Keppel that's joined the fun. Squeaks out to West. Hartwell sends a shot on goal. Rebound was in front but Conan couldn't get the stick on it. Bird picks up to Conan. Conan to West, but it's behind him. Temple has his stick knocked out of his hands. That's going to draw a penalty to Dearborn. And it'll be touched up by West. So with 5.09 to go, it's another power play for Concordia. It'll be Joey Colon into the box, and it's actually going to be a slash on the penalty. And it looks like sitting in the box is Emery, too. Not sure what he's over there for. And could be a two and 10. Apparently we'll have to check on this. But that would be very interesting for Dearborn. They've got a little bit of a shorter roster this year. And Emery still hanging out in the box. Sent around down low. Hebner trying to jam play. It was bouncing around in front. And now it's controlled by Francois. He comes up to the point for Keppel. Keppel, D to D for Rombach, a drive, it goes wide. It's on the back of the net, and that is going to draw a whistle, finally. And Jake Emery is in the box with a 10-minute misconduct.
So it is only a five on four. The 10 minute misconduct doesn't go up on the board. He just will miss the remainder of this hockey game more than likely. Rombach, his shot is blocked by the skate of Hartwell. Bird trying to clear, but a nice stick lift by Francois. Right out in front, still loose puck. Concordia trying to jam away at it. It comes out to the point. Keppel at the right side sends it down low to Beanick. Beanick takes a shot, but it's blocked. Heading there a try. Rebound is still there. Pulls and trying to find it. It's still loose. It squeaks out to the point. Sticks laying all over the place in the zone. Petterly, he's locked up and engaged physically with Francois. Keppel shot. He scores. <laughs> Through all of the chaos and all of the confusion, bodies flying, sticks flying. And it looks like Hunter Keppel has found a goal for Concordia. It does go on the board. They're celebrating. And the faceoff is going to come out to center ice. So despite a little bit of an awkward celebration, that one is going to count. Cullinan wants to have a word with the official about it. As you kind of saw in the replay, just everything that was going on. Comes out to Keppel and he kind of just lets the shot go. And trying to play a little bit of goalie there was one of the Dearborn players. And while this gets sorted out, we'll actually roll that replay again. And of course, as I say that now, we're ready to go. So we're gonna just go ahead and cut that right back. So 4-14, Concordia is on the board. They need to find two more to get this one evened up. Jake Emery remains in the box for Dearborn, but they get Cullinan back. Rebound loose out in front, still there. Side of the goal, and it now goes behind and is into the corner. Shot through by Blau, cleared out. Kudenko, no ice and called. He's racing in. Janice will steer it over to Growth along the near side. Intensity picking up. You can feel everyone on edge here as this game suddenly has a lot more life to it as the Cardinals trying to put in the late charge. Petterly over there. He's pinned to the wall. He had Troyer with him. Tails over there as well. Off the glass, Hartwell can't clear it, but Karn is able to push it past Grove. Concordia making changes. That allows Hartwell to take it easy for a second, and he sends it up the wall to Karn. Karn into Bigelow. Stopped by the linesman. That worked out good for Dearborn. Now Keppel has Bird as the back checker, and he just drops it back for Twombly. Intercepted by Bird as they're trying to get the goalie free. Janice has to work his way back in. Bird with the shot, and it goes up out of play. Important thing to remember here as we come into the closing moments. Concordia has already used their timeout. You only get one. Trying to get Janice pulled there, but intercepted by Bird. So that sends a signal. If Concordia is able to get the play up ice, they're going to be aggressive, pulling Janice here for the extra attacker. Trying to make it a six on five situation, but Colonin and West have that puck pinned to the wall. And that's going to kill off a couple extra seconds for UMD. It comes up the ice for Hebner. Janice headed to the bench. Hebner with the shot and pulls in with the save. It goes to the far wall. Picked up by Twombly. Wrestled away by West. Brendan West, the whack player of the year, to the empty net, and he seals it. It's a 4-1 lead for Dearborn. The three goal lead is restored. 2.22 still to go here. So Concordia not out of it, but Brendan West has made it a three goal lead. Yet again.
West makes his presence felt. He finally gets in the goal column, but had two assists at least. I think he had an assist on all goals, actually, all the three prior goals. We'll see if Janice gets pulled yet again. You'd have to think he does for Concordia. Their season is on the line here. Ediger carries it across the line. Janice still hangs out in the net, so it looks like Concordia is just going to ride this one out under the two-minute warning. Potter still navigating this one up to Kudenko, and he's able to get it out. It'll roll down, and it's going to go right in front of Janice as he'll watch his teammate Benoit pick it up. Intercepted by Korn. They fan on the pass. Korn with the shot, and it goes wide. Romback. Puts it onto the stick of Temple. Down to 90 seconds. Over to I. He'll redirect it into the corner. O'Connell had to evade the pressure from Saar. Poked up the wall to Bigelow. Bigelow sandwiched between Rydell and Romback. Has a couple teammates watching over this. It goes to McCarchuk. Sends it off the wall and out. Uses the net as a little bit of a shield. Icing is signaled for and it will be called. 108 on the clock. Janice remains in the net as we expected him to after they didn't pull him last time they had it down the ice, did Concordia. Tails to the faceoff. His opposite will be Kapari. Concordia going to fight this one to the very last whistle. Temple with the shot, it goes high. Around to Romback. Bigelow trying to pin this one to the wall. Did it yesterday, and he's going to try and eat some more time. Under a minute, 50 seconds here. Bigelow catches a shove there from Romback, just trying to get this one free, and they do. Twombly sends it right back to Bigelow. He'll do it again. That time poked away much easier. Now it's O'Connell's turn. Dearborn just going to run this one out. And Dearborn down to number 23. They were out of the pole at one point this season. Twombly will pick it up. Sends it into the middle for Saar. Steered to the wall by Bigelow. Dearborn, not ranked when the computer ranking started coming out many weeks. They were out of the top 25 coming into last week against Lawrence Tech. They were ranked number 23. After the sweep to get the second seed, they move up five spots to number 18. And when the buzzer sounds, Dearborn is dancing in Massachusetts. They are the WAC Tournament Champions in 2023. They take down Concordia by a score of four to one. And will advance to another ACHA National Tournament. Congratulations to Chris Haltner's team. It's their fourth WAC Tournament Championship, their first since 2020 for Concordia. A great season, a season of improvement. This is a team on the rise. They fall short today, but not many expected them to even make it to Sunday here in the Summit City. They do, and they gave Dearborn a really good game here today and fall just short, but a lot to hang their hat on, and they'll be looked upon favorably at the beginning of next season. Final shots on goal tally, it's 30 for Dearborn, 29 for Concordia, just shows you what a close game this was. Faceoffs, 28 to 27 in favor of Dearborn. Zachary Janis, a great game for Concordia despite the loss. Dearborn had a number of scoring opportunities, but just unable to push some of them through. And Concordia finds one late. Hunter Keppel provided the goods on Friday night to get past Aquinas. But it was too little too late for the Concordia Cardinals. We'll stick with you here for the presentation of the WAC Tournament Championship Trophy to the Dearborn Captains, Joey Cullinan. Brendan West, the ones I know for sure. 
and congratulations. This is a team that lost a good number of their players last year. They lost some good quality guys on the back end. Adam Grote comes top of mind. Billy Brock, Matthew LaForest. But they retool. It was a bit of a work in progress this season. I think they'd agree with that statement. But this is a team that is peaking at the right time. And it results in a tournament championship. There was some gray area coming into the weekend. If they'd be able to make it to the national tournament, number 18, but with the way the numbers looked, it would be a tall task. They eliminate any doubt and win the conference tournament and secure the automatic bid. We'll turn it down to the PA for the trophy presentation. So one more congratulations to UMD. There you have it. They get goals today from Max Hartwell, Bailey Bird, Joey Colonin, and Brendan West. It was a four point game for Bailey Bird. One goal, three assists. Brendan West, a goal and two assists. A three pointer for him. Colonin, two points. Hartwell, one with the goal. And Hunter Keppel with the goal for Concordia, Kyle Hebner. Looks like that's the lone assist. As Dearborn will collect and gather over in front of their home crowd and take the traditional championship picture. For their fourth tournament championship. They'll sit patiently this week and wait for the release of the national tournament schedule and bracket. But one thing they know for sure is that they will be included. So we'll leave it at that. We thank you for tuning in throughout the weekend. It's been a pleasure yet again bringing you the entirety of the WAC Conference Tournament. Congratulations to the University of Michigan Dearborn on a season and a championship well fought and well earned. Best of luck to them the rest of the way. The best of luck to Lawrence Tech as well. They most likely will be included in the national tournament field and of course to Indiana Tech. For my cameraman today, Connor Hendrickson, my partner throughout the weekend, Bryce Ryder. My name is Joe Hacker. Thank you so much for tuning in. This has been the WAC Ice Hockey Conference Tournament brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. <laughs>